Welcome everyone to another tutorial in Khan Academy. Today we're gonna to be doing equations with variables on both sides. The first prompt is solve for B. We have four B plus five equals one plus five B. Now this is the equivalent of having four times some question mark plus five equals one plus five times that same question mark. This can be a little complicated if you don't know what to do. A lot of people will just kind of guess and check and that's really not a good strategy. Just like we can move, like if this was 4B plus five equals one, you can move the five to both sides. As long as you do something on both sides of the equal sign, you can do pretty much whatever you want. So if we have 4B plus five equals one plus five B, besides moving the five, which you already talked about, we could also move the 4B. Now, how do we do that? How do you move a 4B? Well, you can't just move it and say, oh, let's put it over here, unless you do the same operation to both sides. So, how do we go about this? Well, if we have a 4B, that means it's a positive 4B, and we want to do the opposite. We wanna have the opposite operation take place. So we subtract 4B. Now, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So we subtract 4B on the right side also. What happens? Well, 4B minus 4B cancels out. It becomes zero. Zero plus five is just five. And I can write that out for you if you want. Zero plus five. And then we have one, okay? Plus, what is 5B minus 4B? 5B minus 4B gives us one B. I don't know why I wrote my one different there, but I did. Okay, so we have zero plus five equals one plus one B. We can simplify this a little bit. I'm just cleaning up here. So I have five equals one plus one times B is just B. So I can just write B. Now we have just a two-step equation. So what is the key? What, how did I know to subtract this four B? Why didn't I move the five B? Really, you can do either one. The whole point is you want all your variables. So one, you want all your variables on one side, okay? It doesn't matter which side of the equal sign, they just all have to be on one side. And the second thing is, I think it's always easier to move the smaller coefficient. So here we saw that we had two variables. Let me finish writing coefficient first, coefficient. Here we saw that we had two uh, coefficients. We had four B and five B. Both of them had the same vari variable. We have B and we have B. Now they have two different coefficients though. One is four and one is five. So we move the smaller one because generally that makes it easier to do the math later on, okay? It just makes it easier. So that's why I always give that, uh, that tip to my students. Now we're just on to the last part, which is solving for B. Uh, it's already by itself, uh, pretty much. We just have to subtract one from both sides. So now we have four equals, there's no coefficient is what I meant to say equals B and our answer is four. You can always check your answer by plugging it back in. Uh, you often can do this as you get into higher level math courses. Checking with two-step equations happens a lot less, but it's always a good strategy. I recommend that if you're unsure. And we check our answer and we got it. Okay, moving on to the next one. Now we have a lot of things going on in this one. Of course we have variables on both sides as the name suggests here, variables on both sides. Okay, so we know we need to move the variables at some point. But don't get uh, caught up in moving the variables that you forget to see some of the obvious pieces of this. So here's our equal sign. If you look on the left side of this equal sign, we're gonna see that we have this negative seven and a 10. Now those can be combined. I'm not sure why they're written separately, but always look to see if something can be combined on one of the sides of the equal sign before proceeding. On the right side here in this orange box, you can see that we can't combine anything. So we're gonna move on to the left side and we can combine the negative seven plus 10. So negative seven plus 10 is the same thing as 10 minus seven. So we're gonna get three. The four M cannot be combined with the three. So we write plus four M equals 15 minus two M. So that's our that should be your first step is just clean up, clean up the mess. Second thing, as we suggested earlier, we needed to identify our variables. So we have only one variable, one type of variable, it's m, but we have two different coefficients for m. We have negative two m and four m. Let's move the smaller one so we get all the m's on one side. So we're gonna move two m. 
negative 2m is smaller than 4m. So we need to move that. How do we move that? I kind of jumped the gun here. But I saw that negative 2m, and I want to move it. Anytime you want to move it to the other side, we have to do the opposite operation. So what's the opposite of negative 2m is a positive 2m. We can add 2m. If you want to think of it as 15 minus 2m, so we do the opposite of minusing, which is adding, that's the same thing. Or if it was just a negative 2m, we do the opposite, which is adding 2m. Okay. So I, in any way you look at it, that's what we're going to do. We don't add the 2m to the 3. They're not like terms. Don't fall into that trap. So we have 3 plus 6m equals 15. And then this cancels because it becomes 15 plus 0, which is equal to 15. Now it's a two-step equation. First, we're going to subtract 3. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to use reverse BEMDAS. Okay, order of operations. So we go this way when we're solving for, for solving for x. We're undoing the operations to get the variable alone. So we go reverse, undoing, reverse. Okay. Um, another way to think of it is you're looking at your variable and you want to do everything furthest away and then work your way in close to the variable. So we subtract three. Negative three is the opposite of positive three. So we get 12 equals 6m. Now we have six times m. What's the opposite operation of multiplication? Division. So we divide by six and we get m equals what's 12 divided by six? Two. So two is our answer there. Okay, this one should be fairly quick. I'm going to try to do all these examples for you. We have a minus 15 equals 4a minus 3. Nothing to combine on each side. Let's jump into combining our variables first. I always start with your variables when you have variables on start uh, both sides. So always start with variables when dot, dot, dot. There's variables on both sides, okay? So I am going to subtract a from both sides first. We have a positive a, opposite operation, subtract a. That cancels. We have negative 15. The sign stays equals 4a minus a is 3a minus 3. We're going to add 3 to both sides. We have negative 12. Be very careful when doing this type of addition. A lot of people screw that up. Then we divide by 3 because we're multiplying a by 3, and we get negative 4 equals a. There we go. So we have negative 4 as our answer. Feel free to pause this video anytime. Rewind if it's going too fast for you. Last one, let's combine this first. We get 2 plus 6g equals 11 minus 3g. The negative 3g is smaller, so I add 3g to both sides. I get 2 plus 9g equals 11. It's a two-step equation now. I subtract 2 from both sides. I get 9g equals 9. I divide by 9 because it's being multiplied, and I have to do the opposite operation. I get g equals 1. g wasn't that easy. Once you learn all the different methods of solving this. So once you're done, you should get this sound, which means you've done a great job. I'll see you next time. Until then, be good, be kind, be true, be nice, and be honest.